Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, joined at the desk today by the one and only Jeff Zeta Schnur. As we get ready to look at a little bit of League of Legends action, as it's John Hopkins University taking on Missouri State, the Blue Jays versus the Bears. And uh, for those of you who are as confused as I am about the mascot designations, uh, we welcome you to the stream. And uh, yeah, it's going to be some exciting League of Legends action. Of course, we are. Glad to have Corvus back. It's been a long week without you, my friend. And uh, this one, I think, is going to be a little bit different. After all, uh, the patch has changed things slightly, to say the least. Yeah, you could say that, and you wouldn't be wrong. There is a lot of new stuff to uh, go over here. A lot of change-ups, shake-ups in the meta here. But uh, we'll get all to that in just a second as we are getting ready for the Champions Select. But before that... We got a quick briefing on the power rankings and where these teams stand. We want to get in front of you guys. That pops up. Let's take a look at where the CSL guys, 
think everything is going to shake down and shake out. Of course, University of Washington, they think they are ranking number one in JV. Super strong team, super consistent. John Hopkins, we're seeing them today, ranked number two. So hopefully they're going to put on a performance worthy of that second ranking. Going down the list, we've seen a couple of these teams before. UIUC, University of Oregon, UC Davis, Berkeley, RMU, down actually all the way at rank seven. You know, having dropped a game, it is true. They did look a little bit weak in that one loss, but beyond that, they did recover. You know, their postseason has been quite impressive. So, sorry, in between seasons. It's not postseason yet because there's a second season coming and there's playoffs and everything that. It's just the winter invitational right now. But yeah, Ryerson, A. Z and uh, UCLA rounding out the bottom of that power ranking, but I don't find too much fault with these, right? This is a very consistent ranking, I think. I think these are all strong teams in their own right, to say the very least, and hopefully we're going to see exactly what makes John Hopkins so good. If they can adapt to this meta, if they can bring it out, show us exactly why they're ranked number two, uh, it should be a fantastic I think that's the biggest takeaway for the evening for sure. It's that, you know, hey, Missouri State, they're going to have their work cut out for them. John Hopkins, we're going to take a look at that schedule and see exactly why they are number two here, as strong as they are. Going to get their record up in front of you here now. And And unlike every team we've seen up to this point, they are impeccable. Completely undefeated, right? 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. They beat two PSU teams, no waiting. Uh, They also took down JHU. They took down, you know, UNBC, right? These are... twice. Temple twice, uh, PSU twice. Um, they they've they've done a couple uh, double plays, you know, taking down a lot of teams. But realistically, this is not a star-studded, you know, lineup, right? It's not a thing that you've said, okay, you know, the standings are super biased against them. They're just going to, you know, have a really difficult time. This is, you know, it's it's a it's a season that seems very doable to at least have a perfect season on, right? And in that sense, I guess I would say that they might be challenged, right? Because, of course, who else to challenge them but Missouri State University Bears Maroon? And I that's going to be them taking to down. records themselves, right? But most importantly, I think, most importantly, they took down CMU, right? 2 0 CMU. So, and they took down the CC Cougars uh, in a 2 1. Uh, so, Two of the strongest historical schools in League of Legends, and Missouri State's already beaten both, right? And their JV teams maybe not reflective of their whole rosters, their varsity in particular, of course, in CC, I think is quite strong to say the least. Uh, CMU always up there, but yeah, this is going to be absolutely a tough match for both of these teams. I don't think Johns Hopkins is going to you know, have experienced this caliber of team yet. Obviously, we're just coming now into the round of 16, Mm. if I recall correctly. And this should be probably a pretty easy thing to uh, go through, I think. You know, not pretty easy, sorry. Very difficult, but pretty easy to watch because both of these teams should be very competent teams, very exciting, and they should have a good handle on the meta, right? If they can take down that many teams in a row, if they can take down that caliber of teams in the, in the sense of Missouri State, even though they got a buy, they took down CC, right? They took down CMU. They uh, obviously have talent. They just have to show us that they can bring that talent to bear again. And absolutely, those meta adaptations are some of the biggest things I'm going to have on my, on my watch list for these teams here as we do get ready to pull up the draft. Get in, transition that over onto your screen. Make sure that we know exactly who's coming to play and what here. This is going to be tricky. We already have the Twisted Fate and the Kha'Zix off the rip. And if you're watching this saying, hang on, what point of the season are we in? This is this is just the fun of the new patch, the Trindamir as well, coming out and away. That's going to be banned right off the rip. And Gangplank, it's a lot of top lane focus, actually. Gangplank, maybe a bit of a flex there. But so far, the bottom side of this map, pretty well unperturbed by these bans. So I would not be surprised to see some of those earlier, more aggressive picks coming out in the front of this phase is Vladimir going to be the last one out on the ban phase. Just like that, the hover. I would love to see it from John Hopkins here. I mean, I'd be extremely surprised if they picked it this early. I don't think Silas is anywhere near as strong as he needs to be to be considered a first pick. Um, 
champions that are first pickable, right? We're talking, we're talking, yeah, Ezreal. This is a lot more in line, you know? The Urgot, it has been reduced a little bit. It's not so strong. It's not, you know, world-ending. Still consistent. The Aatrox, still consistent. But more importantly, this has given rise to, especially in solo queue, a lot of extremely aggressive jungles. We're talking Shaco, Rengar, Kha'Zix. These are the norm for the jungle in solo queue. So we'll see how these teams have been practicing. If they've been bringing solo queue back into their team games, or team games back into their solo queue, the game yeah. gives us a little bit of a hint where this is heading. Because, of course, the Galio rules the roost he's still very good in the mid lane he still does incredible work against basically every champion and the graves is again one of those aggressive jungles they are taking a couple notes from solo queue good to see adaptations coming in from missouri yeah i like to see the graves locked up here we'll see what's answered back by johns hopkins and man alive do they have a plan and execute it quickly Xin Zhao and azir locked right on in night Stun and rin tasaka here Ready to come to play with that one, so they absolutely know how they're going to be operating against that. No surprises with the Galio Graves on the pickup, and the Alistair maybe then. The only thing that could throw them off their game a little bit, but with that, we're right on into the next phase of bans. Urgot is down here, and we'll see now what Johns Hopkins answer back. Very interesting that they've opted into the Azir, though. I think Azir, especially against things like, you know, the Galio, the Alistair, um becomes very vulnerable to flash cc both mm. of these champs have instant flash cc so you know it's not like he's gonna die 100 to zero that quickly but he is still immobile for a period you know if you get body blocked you can't do anything right you have to flash you have to wall just to get space to get that mobility to get out of there but we'll see maybe just maybe the azir is gonna get enough range enough spacing and lane and there will be tuned down galio so that he doesn't get burst out, but he is going to get pressured. The Graves is going to be on his face. The Lucian ban. The pressure is now on to Missouri. What are they going to go for a bot lane? A <laughs> Sivir. Hmm. And into the Ezreal. Still a very classic pick. Um, you don't get poked down too easily. You can spell shield his W, which is a huge part of his combo. His ultimate. Super, super important. If you spell shield that ult in the middle of a team fight, that is 700 bonus health you are walking around with. Absolutely. What more is there to say? That's a perfect thing to have. You know, just have a spell shield built into your kit. You don't have to worry about the Ezreal too much. The Aatrox will finally drop down. What would round this team out would be something to keep the Alistair off. A Thresh, counter the headbutt engage. That would be fantastic. But the Braum is acceptable here. I just worry that it's going to get CC'd before it can do anything, right? We talked about that CC earlier. The Galio, the Alistair, these champions oftentimes determine whether or not you can actually have a functioning frontline. If they are walking close, if they are strong, if they can engage, your Brahm's just going to get picked. And so now they have to worry about this, right? Johns Hopkins, are they going to be able to play with the Brahm, or is he just going to fall victim to this three-tank frontline? With the Maokai locked in, yeah, that front line is something that becomes very interesting because I can almost see the logic in the Braum before this, right? Okay, hey, look, you've got the Boomerang all throughout landing phase that you're just going to want to be able to kind of cheekily shove off to the side. Ganks in a post-level 6 world for that Graves ultimate? Hey, look, it's a great little thing to have in your back pocket there to be able to pull out that Braum shield as necessary. And, you know, maybe for some of these zoning tactics, the Azir Emperor's Divide, the Braum shield itself, you can kind of cut off a good amount of... of both range and damage and uh, mobility all top to bottom there. But yeah, now against, you got a Maokai here, you got a Galio, you got an Alistair. Braum's going to need to be doing a lot in the Peel game. And I just wonder if he's going to have that here against some of these champions. Yeah, Peel game is going to be difficult, right? We talked about it. It's going to be very, very difficult. I think, especially with double lady carries and a three tank front line, it's looking like Missouri have swapped it up a bit right damage still rules the roost in solo queue that much has been absolutely determined but a new thing has evolved as well there has been space created by these nerfs for teams that can go late game for teams that can actually have tanks that can scale out right even if you get demolished you can still actually survive long enough to actually come back and end the game in your terms and that has been the major change right with the you know removal of irelia the complete destruction of, you know, most of these super aggressive top laners and pretty soon uh, the dispatch of Akali, 
I think that this meta is going to open up for tanks again. Everyone else is predicting that as well. But to what degree? Obviously, we don't know. Hopefully, Missouri do. We should see if they're going to give us a good thing as we start to load into game. Absolutely. Ready to rock and roll here on the game. And it is right down to it. It's, of course, John Hopkins on the blue side, Missouri State on the red side. And that actually kind of fits pretty well with their team colors. The John Hopkins are lighter blue, Missouri a darker red. But hey, what are you going to do? This is, uh, of course, game one. They will have to swap that over at the end of this game as it is a best of three series. We might even see a third potential final match to square it all off. But I think both teams are ready to come in, try to defend their undefeated records, at least in series thus far, and kind of hit their opponent with a little bit of shock and awe. And it seems like that's something that both of these compositions are going to be able to do pretty well is the shock and awe. More so early for the side of Johns Hopkins, I would say, and Missouri State maybe need to just, you know, kind of get there, level it up a little bit. But either way, if they can weather this storm, hold out for just a bit of the mid game, this composition is going to be absolutely ferocious. And extremely hard to burn through for the Ezreal, right? The Ezreal, he's excelling at dealing with these damage picks, right? Things like bursting down a Zin Zhao a Hecarim that runs at you, the Nasus that gets kited really easy, all of these things he does very well at dealing with. But he doesn't do extremely well at dealing with things that have multiple forms of engage, multiple forms of CC, right? He has one blink and then a flash. That's pretty much it, you know? And he's actually opted into um, the minion dematerializers instead of the stopwatch as is, you know, usually seen in the KR region, most of high elo. I would say, likes to take stopwatch as well. It depends on, you know, the build, and obviously, it's not super essential, but when you're getting pushed in by Sivir, generally you want to have the dematerializers, so he took those, but that doesn't preclude you from taking stopwatch as well. You can have both. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can not die from the ganks, not die from the engages once, and still be able to counter push. We'll see whether or not it gets to a point where they even need to be counter pushing in a context of the mid game kind of flowing towards that. I'm, I'm looking at this around the 15 minute mark. I'm trying to base out. Uh, I'm so sorry. Hang on just a second. We got a little bit of action coming down now. So maybe the Alistair in some trouble. They just stunned up Brom in a little bit more trouble. Potential having to back off of that one and just skirting out and away. He'll be okay. Let's see what comes of this one. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's the usual poke sort of zone. Uh, Alistair, of course, is always a threat, um, and that's the reason I was talking about the stopwatch earlier. It, Ezreal has a dash. It's true. Um, Alistair's combo doesn't stop Ezreal's E from going off. It's buffered properly. He can get out, but if he doesn't buffer it properly, it's nice to know that you're not going to instantly die, right? Or if you don't have proper warding, the Graves comes in. Just... To be able to have that safety, especially when you're Ezreal, especially when at the 10 minute mark, you're going to be just getting towards that second item, you know, with the right farm, assuming. But, you know, 12 minutes, you're looking for Frozen Fist, Man, I mean, both completed, and then moving on and upwards. But we should see, right? We shall see exactly where the chips will fall. But so far, neither team really taking a tremendous lead, except in this top lane. The Aatrox absolutely Ooh. trying to finish off I this think Maokai. He's got it with the flash! Does indeed end up taking that one away, and he almost eats the last little bit of tower there, but he was already up triple the CS at 21 to 7, and now look at him. He's going to be absolutely flying ahead in this lane. Has to be yeah, mindful especially to teleport. Burned flash, right? That Getting that flash early is super, super crucial. When you're the bruiser into the tank matchup, you need to get those flashes, you need to get those summoners, because then it opens them up to jungle pressure. And I think that's the real danger for this Maokai. If he starts getting camped by Xin Zhao, he's not going to do much of anything, right? He is a very, very immobile champion. The only thing he can do is root to any kind of a minion or to somebody who's ganking him. And usually that's in the opposite direction of his turret. So we'll have to, you know, keep our eye on that top lane. Expect Night's Dawn to make a return or make a first appearance, I should say. He hasn't actually even been up there yet, but make an appearance and, uh, take over that lane if they really want to punish this tank line taking away one of the main tanks especially the one that's in the solo lane that's not building ap like the mid lane galio is is super super critical i think
to making their composition work out. You know, they don't want to let this tank line scale anywhere near into this mid game. CS advantages pretty much across the board here as well, if not even places like the jungle and a little closer in that bottom lane, but off to a great start thus far for the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins there. Starting to set up a little bit more of what they can now take away with these advantages that they built for themselves, and that means Night's Dawn going to be looking towards this top side. Jungle might be on a collision course with the Graves here. We'll see whether or not that is the case, but I think he's going to be out in time, and then, hey, whether or not they want to be priming maybe another gank here. It looks like he is found out. We'll just trot right along. Still full LHP, no problems there, and Murmur still just taking a beating underneath his own top lane tower. And tell 25th Soul doesn't even care that he's you know, taking a tower shot or two on the chin. He's fine to continue that harass out to deny that CS because he's already built himself a 25 CS lead at just shy of six minutes. Yeah, and that's just going to keep growing, right? Unless Graves stops up and uh, tries to even this out, the deficit's just going to get larger. The Maokai has to be respecting at this point. The Aatrox doesn't even need damage. He's just building CDR and then getting away with it for free, but 2v2 starting the mid lane. They want to get a little bit more or out not. of this, but I think they just have to back it on off. Yeah, Rin Tasaka knew he might have had something there, but just backed off there now. Saul's on Pushaha, Puhaha there. I want to get that correct. Is uh, having to back it off, and now Yo saying in a little bit of trouble, maybe. Maybe just trying to be the bait, and that's going to be a little bit of the three on two action here. Here's Alistair, and that's a Flash kill over for the Paleo. wall. They want to get more Rin Tasaka. He's going to be in some trouble with the Ignite, but his team is here. Can they find more out of it? Looks like they want to continue this one on the chase side now for Missouri State. John's Hopkins Flash trying to get back. There's the taunt. It's a double kill. Beautifully executed now. And Yosei, he does not want to slow down for. Can you get out of this? I think so. It is the Ezreal. He is a slippery son of a gun. But at the end of the day, that's two kills now for the jungler of Missouri State. One for the mid lane. And possibly, likely, an Infernal Drake tacked on top. Yeah, the Infernal Drake. I mean... This is basically a perfect early game for the side, uh, for, for the bottom four champion on the side of Missouri. Obviously, Maokai is not having a perfect early game, but the rest of the team is almost making up for it. The gold lead in the top lane is still so insurmountable that they don't actually have a lead yet. But if they can get that CS back in line, you know, things are going to be very, very good for the side of Missouri. But Johns Hopkins... If they can ride their top lane into victory, you know, maybe it's going to work out for them. They just need to put more pressure, more time to this Aatrox and just stop worrying about the bot side so much. Yeah, bot side is going to be slippery. I mean, you have some targets that are really tough to kill down here. Obviously, Sivir with the spell shield, Alistair with just the amount of peel that he can create on that side. And then, you know, Galio, no easy gank either, although maybe a little easier now that his flash is down. And Rin Tasaka gonna know this he's now level six he has the emperor's divide available and knight's dawn can come into combo and ultimate as well when necessary but taunt almost finding him and you can tell that Golzin, he feels really comfortable in this particular situation and not getting out cs too heavily either with the kill advantage this is not a mid lane that's going the way that john's hopkins want it to be so we'll see if this is here can get things back on track for himself in this mid lane or they're really just going to pour all their focus on into this top. Come up, gank the Maokai again. Hey, no problems. Point this soul, though. He's content to just continue this massive farm lead he's building. Yeah, and uh, he's just a simple farmer. He's just cultivating his minions. He's cultivating his wallet. You know, taking his time up in this top lane. And I think that's really what Johns Hopkins has to do. You know, they have Azir. They have... Ezreal with a small CS lead as well. Take a little bit of time. Let the Ezreal scale up. You know, you can afford to let Ezreal scale because he's always going to scale faster than the enemy AD, right? His items are cheaper. They're more efficient. They get, you know, once they stack especially, they get incredibly strong for him. And plus, when you combine that with his burst compared to Sivir, especially in the early to mid-game phases, he's just going to be ahead. So... Johns Hopkins doesn't have that much to worry about. They have the Azir for super late if they really want to go there. But in the mid game, they're still going to be very strong. They're still going to have a great advantage. And if the Aatrox is forming side lane pressure, they're going to be able to start stacking their advantages together, right? They're going to force them to play, you know, 
four versus four style in this bottom lane and then just leave the Maokai to die if he does so. Couple early wow, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> little scrimmages, yeah, making themselves apparent here. Looks like we actually may have a bit of a collapse on the Night Stone if he's not careful there. But speaking of collapse, Rin Tasaka's roamed up to this top lane. Murmur's going to be in some trouble there. And that's the next one for 25th Soul. But they looks like Johns Hopkins may be in some trouble here on this bot side. Not quite found on the collateral damage, though. And I don't know if Missouri can push this one any further. Missouri State, I should say. They need to back it off. They're not going to get tower pressure. Instead, they're going to get their tower pressured. Johns Hopkins coming out definitively ahead of that exchange. Ooh. Pushing in towards the top side as well. You know, this could be relatively early turret tick. I'm not sure if they're actually going to send anyone up to stop. It doesn't look like it as of right now. And if they take the first turret, that Aatrox is lead, which is already probably about two, two and a half thousand gold over his counterpart. It's just going to get even larger and they do take it down. He's just going to get more gold. I mean... What, what can you really ask for? You can't ask for much more. A 50 CS lead, two kills in a turret? Hmm. Just devastating. 25th Soul is absolutely slamming down Murner here in this top side. And sure, you can start to say, hey, look, some of this is just the champion matchup, but the champion matchup is not just 50 CS in the whole... I mean, that line's drawn somewhere long before, right? You might expect to be... 10 to 20 CS down at this point and shoved in a little bit, but you're just getting, you know, beat down so aggressively under your own tower and now don't even have that tower left. This is where you, many players, become just so lost in this game, right? And if you're now Missouri State and looking at how you come back and how you really start to deal with this, well, you know there's a bounty on Aatrox. You know that 25th Soul is a high priority target here, but the rest of the map is. You know, not going perfectly either. You got some kills, you're doing okay, but the gold deficit here is something I'm sure they're aware of, something they know they have to make up and don't feel like they're going to be able to make up in this top side, so. They're going to try mid, right? The Graves is here. They're going to look for an engage shortly. With all the CC of Gallia, you have to think it's possible. It's just a question of pulling the trigger at the right time. Seems I got a little skittish and wanted to back off. There is a teleport from the Ezreal coming down into this bot side. Two Maybe, Infernal Drakes. Yeah, this Infernal Drake will be contested in time. Who knows? But yeah, if Missouri State can lock this one down, it'll be their second. Second indeed. And about 2k gold down. But those dragons stacking this early, that's going to make a huge difference. I'm certain of it. Because the question of almost a race to the finish now, right? Do John Hopkins actually have the Aatrox and have the time to win with him or is the bottom side of the map for Missouri just going to be large enough that it won't matter right they're racing on two opposite sides of the map it's completely perpendicular tracks whoever gets the finish first though still brings down the next they're still going to win so as of this point it looks like the entire plan for Missouri is just forget about topside we don't need topside topside doesn't matter I don't care if our Maokai is hard inting just win the rest of the map Maybe it's going to work out. A truck's contesting red, though. Yeah, he wants to find it. Don't think he ended up getting away with that one. Pretty sure that went over into the hands of Graves there, so no real problems at the end of the day, except for, hey, maybe this Rift Herald here in the mid lane. and Three here. here to back it up as well. Now 25th Souls in the mix, and Yosang has to be careful how he tries to get this one down, because I don't think there's any saving this tower at this point. Rift Herald's just going to beat it on down, but no. Or not. Actually end up Destroying that pretty quickly. Tower makes it by with just a little bit of HP. And Jones hmm. Hopkins backing off, saying, you know what? We want the tower, but we don't want it that bad. They feel good about the roam. 25th Soul obviously still has pressure in that top side. The wave buildup is there for Missouri State, but... I think the really important thing was that the Rift Herald charge got every plate, right? Mm -hmm. They don't need to commit because they got all of the bonus gold out of the turret already. And it's not the first turret, so you're not getting anything extra. So in that sense, I think they played it very, very measured. They just said, okay, all we need to do is just make sure we get as much gold as possible. They maximized it. That's it. Job accomplished. You know, they can go back whenever they want to now, finish off the turret, get the rest of the gold. But they didn't lose anything for it. And so that kind of measured play, especially when you're ahead so much gold in this early game, is a very, very good thing to see. It means Johns Hopkins knows their win condition. They know how to take steps towards it. 
but they're not overextending. And that's a really, really good thing to see, especially in teams um, of this level. You know, the more tough your opponents are, the more you have to respect them, the more you have to expect them to be able to come back. If you stay too long, if you throw that gold lead away, everything you've worked for up until this point is going to be gone. So it's a very good play for them to take that measured step and to back off. I think a lot of it too comes down to the fact that 25th Soul has a 600 gold bounty on his head, right? And he's got both of their kills. He's certainly the main agency in all of their driving force of this game. So if there were to be a dive, it would need to be him going into it. And, you know, why take that risk at this point when you can just continue to stack out this uh, lane you know, is going really well thus far, but maybe not against two. We'll see if he can get out of this one. The ultimate does come down, but it's not going to catch up. He don't want to chase time. that. Yeah, and just like he's that, up, he, he's up 70, 70 CS. Insane, insane. This guy has just absolutely created a massively. Last time we talked about him, just three or four minutes ago, he was up 50 CS, stretching that by 20 in such a limited amount of time, while coming down and getting a roam that didn't even take the tower. I mean, this guy is just funneling CS into himself here and see now if this gank can come on through it is going to be a 3v2 that's going to be some trouble here is 25th soul and he's slapping it on down nightstone's going to get the kill yo sang the prey in this particular instance two assists go out dealt with the cards and now this tower absolutely dead to right nightstone will take credit for that one as well and you can see now johns hopkins really priming up to just start absolutely battering down some of these missouri state players This is getting to be a little bit strange, right? They're looking for, you know, the same thing, right? They're looking for mid lane plays. They're looking for turrets. They're looking for objectives. And then all of a sudden, it just seems like, wait a sec. You remember that gold lead we have? 25th soul. Let's just bring him down. And they just yeah, bring him do down and then absolutely wreck face. I, that's really the danger, right? If he comes out of a side lane, the gold lead all of a sudden has gone from, you know, slightly in favor of the side of uh, Missouri to not at all in their favor, right? He has so much gold in his pocket, so many items that they have to deal with him. They have to respect. And if they don't, that's going to happen again. Now damage control, a huge part of Missouri State's game plan. You can tell they've actually been trying to take steps to play this a little bit more measured out. Playing around dragons, they know this third infernal would be huge, but that is absolutely the invitation to fight, brawl, and scrap if you are now Johns Hopkins. This ward's going to be so crucial. We'll see if one team's willing to make the first move. I could bet, I could guess which one. Yeah, John imagine. Hopkins. Which one has been taking the aggressive plays? Which one's been trying to make things happen? And you know which one is probably going to be engaging first. That might be the case right now. Aatrox looking for a fight. They want to get a little bit more. There's Simmer on the hunt comes down. That's a glacial fissure, and it's only going to knock up the cow, but it is going to mean he is going to get down side. for this one. Yeah, wants to get the back line, wants to get the flank. They're all Big together. Taunt. The taunts are there, but Rentasaka gets murdered. Their health bars are so low for Missouri State, and they're just not falling if you are Johns Hopkins. That means they're going to take away four. Only Graves left to survive, and now the Infernal Drake, the prize on top, means that they're going to cut that percentage back, end up with a little bit of their own going to get a chance to be equal in this game but as far ahead as they are anyway they're already spitting out so much more damage than those two infernals could hope to make up for on the side of missouri state so that's a huge one fight and now they're setting up big time in these bottom lanes huge time and i think this is probably just a result of the fact that johns hopkins they know where the lead is right the lead is on the atrox they say okay as long as we enable the Aatrox to get in, deal the damage, and live through these fights, we're going to do fantastically. And th what they did in that last fight was actually pretty much picture perfect. Um, they didn't account for the Galio still having the flash taunt, but at the point when he flash taunted, there was no follow-up damage. There was no Graves ultimate that had already been used. Graves wasn't even in the fight. He was way off towards the side, not doing any damage. Sivir wasn't even alive anymore. So if neither of your two damage carries are actually alive when you get that flash taunt off, it doesn't matter. All of a sudden, the flash has been used for nothing. Taunt doesn't get at you anything either, and there's no damage to finish anybody. So, yeah, just the early damage, focusing down that Sivir, zoning off the Graves, pretty much just one John Hopkins that fight. Now we'll see what else they can put together for themselves here, because 
It's not a small lead they've amassed for themselves here. Just shy of 20 minutes. 37k gold. So roughly 29. That's 8 to their advantage here. And it's all just CS. I mean, the tower's obviously making up a, a good portion of that too. But, I mean, you look at these CS advantages they've built for themselves. The smallest lane-to-lane -lane matchup, the smallest deficit that Missouri State are in is 30 in the bottom lane. The rest of it is just looking more and more insurmountable across the board when you take a peek at that top lane. And now what Rin Tasaka has managed to do here in the mid lane, Solzhen's going to have some work cut out for him. He might actually just get right down to the grave. That's going to be tough, but this one's going to be just get the cow, get him to back out of that one. But now, or he's got a killing spree. That's a little bit more as Rin Tasaka finds Yosang. And now this is absolutely a dead Alistair. I don't think he can get away with this one. Not no way. Happen. Yeah. Four picks himself up a double kill. This Ezreal sneakily coming more and more online. We've been watching 25th Soul and Rin Tasaka all game, but Four says, hey, you're not taking all the glory off this field. No, sir. It's funny, because the two bars on the left of his name and the two bars on the right of his name also add up to four. Ah, there you go. I Some like it. A little Some bit of a fun fact that I noticed during the game, but also a fun fact, Baron has already been taken. Johns Hopkins are 10K up at 21 minutes. I think I know how this one's going to end. Game number one is looking so, so dire for Missouri after taking down such strong opponents. They are now faced with yet another one, right? This Winter Invitational, it promised to deliver us the best of the best. It's continuing to do so, right? Teams that have been undefeated all season long are just completely running into each other. And it's happening. One team has to lose, right? This is League of Legends. There are no ties here. But to do so in such a spectacular fashion, right? To just take the Aatrox and run over a lane so hard that you win the game. I mean, we haven't seen that in a long time. This is absolutely the gauntlet being thrown down to every single team who's watching now that may come up against the likes of Johns Hopkins here. And now Murner not getting out of that one. The ultimate's not going to save them. The mastery's pop just to be a little BM. And look at this, Missouri State, they're having to battle back against the Azir Towers just to get out of their own side of the map. That's not even the main lane they need to be concerned with because this bot lane is pushing in heavily and all the way over on the top side of the map. You have four as well, just shoving up the top. And now, Yosang have to flash out of that one, have to burn just to stay alive. Maybe to go stop four here, but consider having to run from that Ezreal when he's got the Iceborne Gauntlet. That could be troublesome. This tower in the bot lane also gonna fall. We're only at 22 minutes, but this already looks now like Missouri State are circling the drain and yeah this is only gonna get worse now as these next towers start to get bludgeoned on and possibly an inhibitor falls that that's when things get really dire and you know getting that right just getting the first inhibitor cracking the base open i mean with the baron buff it seems almost inevitable right they're gonna have four in one lane you're gonna have the atrox in the other you have to send at least two members to stop him the other four should be able to take down a turret at some point right it just seems like, you know, the curse of inevitability at some point. But as of right now, at least, they haven't taken more than the top lane inner. As soon as that does fall, Baron minions are going to be able to walk forward. The Siege minions are going to be able to hit these towers. And Johns Hopkins are going to be able to start chipping away at the base, right? Their Siege is incredibly low. Of course, they have Ezreal, the Azir, also not, not fantastic at sieging. They do not have a team built for this. But it doesn't matter when you have a side lane this far ahead. It hasn't slowed them down so much this yet, uh, this far. Uh, and so, with the Baron as well, just kind of on the, I would guess, twilight uh, moments of that, you know. How to set that up becomes a little bit trickier. I may just want to get this dragon before it all does start to wrap up in their favor, too. We'll see whether or not that comes down there. Really not too hard-pressed here, being about 14k gold in the lead always pretty well pushing and substantially by every metric Missouri State backed into a corner here it's just a matter of where they want to knock down first and it looks like with Missouri State kind of being drawn out toward that mid lane they're going to send 25th soul to the bot may be able to rush that turret down pretty quickly if they don't rally around trying to get in his corner before that it's just a lot of patient play coming out of the side of Johns Hopkins here. They're not in a huge rush. They know they've got all these advantages. They know they can pretty much kill anybody. Still pushing for it, and this could be the first kill. 25th and Soul. He's looked for something, but they shove Graves of the Wall. 
Yeah, this is going to be bad news for Yosang. He's not getting out of that one, even with the Galio help. It's the best chance to get a revenge kill, perhaps, with Knight's Dawn there. Just living through it. Are you kidding me? Rinta Saka making that one happen for himself, getting the kill at the end of the day, and Galio out and away. Solzong was punished. Oh my that. gosh. And now bad Just news keeps going. for Maraca. Can't get out of that one, and now Venue going to be in some real trouble, along with Murner. I believe this is likely just going to be the game wrapping up here. The death timers are low, but there's just absolutely no defending this one, and the health bars are too high on the side of Johns Hopkins. They're going to be taking game yeah, number one almost. Game number one. Yeah, that's absolutely. just going to be... They're running up the scoreboard. They're trying to pad a little bit more. Can't make it back to the fountain. That's the ace. They get it officially. And five seconds left on Souls on no chance he can defend this one out in 25 and a half minutes. This all comes down. Johns Hopkins making a statement in game number one. No statement. It is punctuated at the very end with the respawns coming in. The Ezreal goes down, but yes, that is quite a statement to say the least that was absolutely crazy from johns hopkins um just to to finish a game right mm. making so few mistakes after um what was a, admittedly a very back and forth super early game right? right johns hopkins two infernal drakes they have control they've got the bot side but they have no top side top half is gone it's seeded to atrox he is given the louisiana concession and more they just keep throwing land at him until they realize they've run out of everything and he's at their next. Yeah, it absolutely ended up just being a bludgeoning for them on that top side of the map. And uh, I know we kind of sound like a broken record just talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, but it really did open up the rest of the map to gain those other advantages. And that's where it became so crucial that, you know, now Nightstone could just focus on the bottom half of the map, focus on getting that Azir ahead who didn't need all that much help to begin with. Well, in the bot lane with four, those guys just came into their own right around that, what, 15-minute mark or so, and then just didn't stop from there, just absolutely pouring down the heat to where Aatrox, by the end of it, may not have even been their biggest problem. They had to deal with this Ezreal as well. They had to deal with the Azir, and they just couldn't keep up. It was stifling, but it all did start there in that top lane, all traced back to that first solo kill and beautifully performed then by, by Johns Hopkins to just follow through with the rest of the match. Yeah, and... If they can do that again, uh, <laughs> Johns Hopkins is looking very clean. You know, I mean, there's a reason they're up on the power rankings. Uh, but for a team that took down CC, that took down CMU, I'm looking for a bit more from Missouri. You know, they obviously had a plan. Um, if they hadn't fallen so far behind, it would have delayed Johns Hopkins significantly. I don't know if it would have changed the outcome. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a bit more of a meta composition, a lot more focus on damage, a lot more focus on a forward-facing comp that can chase very well, that can engage very well, that can zone very well, and do all that while still not giving up the fact that they did win the super early game, right? right. Take those things, take those advantages, combine them with what they already got. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see a competitive game number two. Well, with that in mind, League of Legends being a game of adaptation, we do have to give these players a quick second or two to make those adjustments, talk about it, and decide exactly how they're going to come back and punish some of the mistakes that they saw in game number one, uh, capitalize on some of the advantages they found for themselves in game number one. So we are going to be tossing it over to just a quick little break, but when we come back, we'll have either the extension or the conclusion of this series between two in so far, undefeated Titans. Can Johns Hopkins close it out, keep their 2 0 streak alive? Or will Missouri State battle back to stay alive in this series? We'll find out right after this.
say you need a hero, someone to set you free. You say you need a hero, but don't put your faith in me. Don't put your faith in me. No. We all get lost sometimes. We all fall sometimes. The darkness in our hearts makes us shine like little stars. We are heroes. We are heroes. Well, thank you for sticking around with us through the break. Ladies and gentlemen, ready now to get back in with game number two. Players ready as well. They've swapped sides. Maybe hoping to swap results if now you are Missouri State University. Trying to get in. Get a little bit of that blue side magic and get this series all tied back up. We'll see what adjustments they make because so far, bands still the same. But, you know, this is the cover your base bands. Got to get the Kazakhs out early. I want to see the twisted fate on the side of Johns Hopkins and Johns Hopkins probably no real reason to change up much of their strategy here. Yeah. I mean, if it's working that well, you don't change it. You really don't. There's no point. So we'll see, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, it will change. Maybe it will be, uh, a bit of a different game. Um, we can't after all predict the future. We can predict the fact that with a performance that stellar, uh, they're going to be hard to, at the very least. Well, the Ezreal going to be something taken away from Ford. Not going to want Maraca playing that Sivir again in the bot lane. Was effective, especially in some of the earlier uh, little tidbits and exchanges, but just didn't get rolling maybe as quickly as they wanted to. Ezreal, like you detailed in the last game, you know, faster, cheaper, more efficient. Something that we could see. And Knight's Dawn still just going to stick around on that Jin Zhao this time. Ain't broke, don't fix it, and they'll need a new AD for sure, but otherwise can still start running down maybe some similar components of this particular composition. Second pickup, wouldn't be surprised to see this go to either you know, support or one of the solo laners. Maybe they just lock in the AD here, but I kind of doubt it. We'll see what it does come down to. No, yeah, yeah, there it is. It's the Jin locked up. Was something actually banned away from them in the second phase last game, so perhaps that's something that is ready to come to the table with and yet again for Vainsu, that's going to be Alistair locked up and Solzen wants to stick to that Galio. This is, you know, what they claim to know what they want to stick with. Played it last game, didn't work for him. Maybe changing this up this time around will you know, prove, prove the point that they're trying to make. Yeah, and uh, as uh, Johns Hopkins on the Malzahar? Little, little strange it's an unorthodox idea. pick, specifically because oftentimes it just gets run over. Um, it can be very good, right? If you find the right kind of purchase, if you find, you know, um, the right person, flash ultimates can be fantastic. But it is very unusual to pick it first rotation not having seen something that you know, Malzahar 
absolutely destroys. He does all right against Galio. You know, Galio is a melee champ. Galio does get punished. Galio does get forced back. He does get zoned out. But it's not a guaranteed win. You know, Malzahar is extremely susceptible to champs with multiple forms of CC. Galio has that. The Roams obviously are going to be dangerous as well. I like the Amumu pickup. This is quite a strong pick in certain circles. Um, and specifically when you're facing uh, potentially... Uh, okay, they went with the Zin Zhao. Velkos, okay. okay. They already had Zin Zhao, which makes the Amumu not a good pick. Sure, yeah. They've gone with Velkos. Make a lot of sense there, right? Get the Velkos, lock it in there. Velkos Jin, I'm assuming that's going to be the lane that's uh, fairly tough to deal with. I mean, he's going to have a ton of harass, keep the Alistair on the back foot, keep him at a distance especially, kind of nullify a little bit of that support pick, assuming that is going to be the Velkos support. They could just toss it into a solo lane and say, hey, you do what you do and have a good time. Nocturne the pick up here. A little bit more of some backline. A little bit more of a in-your-face composition for Missouri State. And with the Olaf, too, maybe that's what they want. Maybe they said, hey, our problem was we were not aggressive enough. Well, now here's four champions that just try to get into the middle of your team and cause as much chaos, havoc, and destruction as they can. And Ezreal. That's not a bad team comp at the end of the day. I mean, you have everything pretty well represented if you can keep him safe on the backline. You've got a ton of different options for peel. got a ton of different options for engage here. And it should work out, but there's a lot that you have to go through on the side of Johns Hopkins. And if you mess up, if you're not just absolutely on par where you need to be, they're going to be able to punish that composition so extraordinarily hard. So now with the Darius, the last lock in for 25th soul, that's going to be, oof, if you thought Aatrox could snowball pretty well, wait till you give a kill or two early to Darius in that top lane. See how that's going to work out. Against an Olaf, it's going to be fun. It's going to be some swinging axes for sure. But uh, this, this could be very bad for Murner if he falls behind early again because he does not have that almost safety net of being able to at least get tanky to stay useful like he did with the Maokai. Not that that happened last game, but at least was part of his, you know, objective. Yeah. And, uh... This is going to be quite an interesting game. Velkaz does extremely well against Alistair. Um, the Malzahar, uh, at least in the early game, really can't lose to Galio. He doesn't win either. But he doesn't get hard punished for it. Mm. And uh, maybe, just maybe, this will be exactly what the doctor ordered. Maybe this will be the time that the comeback starts to happen. We do, after all, have Olaf in that top lane versus mm. a Darius. He has the potential to pop off. He has the potential to just win it big and run away with game, much like that Aatrox did last time. Well, now, with that, you know, how to battle back into this series, how to make those adjustments. I mean, when you're looking at it from the perspective of Murner here, just getting, you know, tossed to the wayside so heavily in that last game anyway... Are you putting some of the pressure here on Yosang? Are you saying, hey, look, let's get some jungle, let's make this happen? Is it all just 100% on your back there? Hey, no, I can do this. I mean, what's going through this player's head right now, you wonder? Oof. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going through their heads because it's different for every player, right? Yeah, the mental... You can't read minds, Jeff. I, I'm telling you, I've tried. I just tried again. Just to make sure, didn't work very well. So, if you're looking for a psychic, can't do that. What I can do is tell you that after a loss like that, it is generally very demoralizing. Generally, the team that has won the game in 20, 25 minutes has a very big advantage. Reset doesn't happen. The series ends. But the opposite has been true sometimes, right? Um, there was very noticeably a game that we played, uh, best of three, where we led off the first game with a 19-minute victory. Mm. We then proceeded to get 2-1. Um, it happened, right? Teams can reset. They can have great mental. They can have secret strats. I'm just hoping that this is one of those for Missouri. Whether it's the reset, whether it's mental, whether it's a secret strat, something needed to have changed for this game. They did get the Ezreal, but something needs to have changed drastically for them to get this win. 
maybe it's just a little bit more aggressive jungling potential out of Yosang. Though the Nocturne starts a little bit slower than that Graves in terms of the, just the context of lane ganks, but you know, lane ganks not really something we saw a whole lot of in the last game anyway. Kind of the mid game, post level six was where those junglers started to make a little bit more of an impact in that game. So this could be a good adjustment for them here. A little bit more of a do or die on their shoulders with Murner as well in this top lane. We'll see how he does manage to stack up. Maybe the comfort against Darius, something there. And Maraka, of course, that Ezreal versus the Jin. I think the biggest question mark in this bot lane is the Velkaz, because you can already see that harassment keeping them at a distance. Not the worst thing for an Ezreal, but you take a look at Alistair here in you. Mm. That's a tough one for him to push up and play aggressive to kind of play to all the merits of that champion. So I'm curious to see how this one is going to continue to pan out. Hopefully, it'll pan out well. But, you know, after all, this is a very different game from game number one uh, in the sense that the entire composition, pretty much, except for the jungler, has changed for Johns Hopkins, right? They stuck with the Xin Zhao, and every other champion is different. The Jin, not known for being super strong in this meta. The Velkaz is. Malzahar isn't. Uh, the Zin is. The Darius uh, depends on who you are and if you're in Platinum Elo or lower. Um, <laughs> anyway, right? Besides the pub stompy champions and the back and forth top lane, it's going much the same way. The Olaf is over-respecting. He's not getting his farm. He's not getting any damage. That's not good to see, right? If this repeats, if they have the same kind of issue, if they have the same losing top lane, especially in a matchup that he's supposed to have a lot more agency in, this is going to be the exact same game as game one. Maybe even just a little quicker. It is a Darius. He can really take off and start getting some of those kills. A little bit quicker than the Aatrox, maybe, and an Olaf, like we talked about earlier. Maybe just going to be a little less useful than the Maokai as a meat shield to throw at some things. Now, though, turning an eye to mid lane, I'm curious to see how Solzhen's going to start to deal with Rin Tasaka here, because he's doing doing well in the EX, uh, I'm sorry, in the HP exchange. It's going mostly his way. He's pushing up as well. It's not to the tune of CS. It's not making him those dollars, and that's an important point to consider. He was not down by more than 10 at this point in the last time, and keeping actually a fairly competitive CS until really Rin Tosaka was able to cross the mid game and just take off with things. This time around, however, maybe a bit of an earlier lead being built out in that mid lane. It's complimenting the top lane pretty nicely. Already not not quite to the tune of thirty <laughs> CS up at four minutes. <laughs> thirty three to five. You oh, know, no. this is bad news for Murner. He's going Jesus. down here. That's the first blood under tower yet again. Twenty fifth soul playing okay. it perfectly to the edge of that. And <sighs> takes a complimentary tower shot. Doesn't care. He's going to go back. Doesn't have the teleport. Doesn't need it. He can walk back to lane. He could take the scenic route and still be in absolutely no danger of his lead being compromised. Yeah, no kidding. Um, this is... I mean... It's hard to view it as anything but just absolute destruction, right? That's just crazy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. We've seen rougher games in, uh, in our tenure here at... CSL, even this but, season, I believe. But I don't know if we've seen rougher lanes. That's what I'm saying, right? This is a lane that has been... I I don't I don't have words. You know, usually I'm very good at having words, right? This is a, kind of uh, a thing that I do. But um, I haven't seen a lane won this hard in quite some time, right? And that's including, right, playing against actual challenger and master tier players. It's oh. just, oh my, what, what do you do? What do you do? He has no fear. He has no respect. He's just going in. That's just, yeah, you, you call your jungler, but even at this point, I don't uh, think Yosang would be able to help. He was just a few seconds too late to that one, and it's going to stay that way. And now him needing all this attention means the map is opening up elsewhere now. This is going to be bad for the rest of Missouri State. They're going to try to get out of this one, and... Bainsu might be the sacrificial lamb that does go down. Indeed, they make hamburgers here, and that's going to be another one. Yeah. Getting down Maraca as well. Both kills going over to four. He's got two for himself, and pretty much tying up, actually, the scoreline almost perfectly to his top lane counterpart, Darius, as their CS 
is within just one of each other at this point. Devastating here, and much on the back, of course, of that gank coming out of Night's Dawn. He was able to find that pressure because he knew that the Nocturne was nowhere to be found. He was on that top side just, you know, bandaging the wounds, trying to stop some of that bleeding here, and this could be even more into Sokka. Actually having to flash out, but knows he's got the damage to get Souls on Puihaha right on down. Yeah. And that, at the end of the day, is just the fifth kill coming out now for the side of Johns Hopkins this early. And it's a pretty good distribution. Two in the top, two in the bot, one in the mid. I don't think you can really ask for a more well-rounded spread of kills. Yeah, and uh, if he can find, you know, maybe a couple more, uh, that'd be fantastic, right? But uh, it's just... Is it going to matter, right? Do you need to find any more kills? I, of course, I mean, it means a quicker end of the game, but this so far has just been even more one-sided than the previous game. It seems like the comfort picks have come out. They're not even worried about composition anymore. Johns Hopkins are just... They're just taking all comers, right? Now in a 1 versus 2, 25th soul, he's weighing his options. As strong as he is, he doesn't want to get involved in this. One versus one, he is guaranteed a victory. He knows it. Two versus one, things happen sometimes, right? You can't account for every variable in that scenario. So he does the, sm the smart thing and just waits, right? He doesn't need to take that advantage. He doesn't need to take that fight. He's already got a massive lead. He's just going to keep walking with it. And this is the point where they're going to start just collecting a little bit more out of the side. Missouri State's jungle. They already getting in aggressively onto some of those camps and show no signs of slowing down just yet. At this point, Drake was a certain contention in the last game. They wanted to get those infernals early. This time around, well, hey, look, it's just a cloud Drake down. We don't want to make too much of a big deal of it. The Ragnarok coming out. He's unstoppable, but the dunk's going to make sure he absolutely has to back and no teleport for him. Look at this. I actually want to try to come in, turn this one around. That's going to be a nice kill, actually. And a death okay. turned over onto 25th Soul. So you saying doing a great job, actually, just trying to make something to nothing there. And brings up a teleport. Hey, they got the kill. As well, too. They, I mean, they waste a teleport as well. That's a, that's a pretty great sign of life, actually, coming out now from Missouri State, who looked to be floundering up until now. Yeah, very, very good, in fact. Right? They, uh, they didn't just, you know, take a, take a chunk out of Johns Hopkins. They took a massive bite, right? They decided, okay, what's the way that we win this? Shut down the Darius. They were like, okay, well, let's just do it. You know, spend what we have to get the results we need. And if anything, right, they finally slowed it down the bleeding. You know, it might not fully have stopped yet, but at the very least, they can say that they've made an attempt and that the Darius is no longer just getting free reign over this top. Yeah, just kind of a brush across the plate there does back him on off, but into Sokka now, actually, just happy to initiate the full-on lane swap, essentially, says, look, you know what, if they're going to come after anyone, when they can come after me, I can lock up one of them, maybe get the 2v1 kill just a little easier, and harass under tower just a tick better, you know, this is Galio that you have to deal with now, in the mid lane, Galio Darius, that's a, you know, a matchup that every solo laner should know pretty well, just from the days when Galio was top, and... Well, it was a very together. different Galio. Well, okay, Be sure. Uh, uh, this reworked Galio did have a little bit of a, you know, not the craziest thing to, to kind of know the ins and outs of that matchup, but now 25th Soul, he's roamed back down. That's going to be almost certainly the kill coming through. No, the bleed does find it at the end of the day. I thought it was just on the tip, but 25th Soul giving up yet another death, and that one's coming over to Souls, and we'll feel good about that one. Maybe not greatest. You know, the tower was the cost of all of that, and First tower yet again now to the side of Johns Hopkins. Already setting up pretty well to put a lot of damage in this second one and clean up some additional delicious plate gold. It'll be tough now. See how they can bounce back and try to keep track of just how this lane swap's going to keep popping back and forth. Because it looks like Rintasaka back to the mid lane, happy to just hold it out there. Now does the split push game begin for 25th Soul or is it just trying to cause as much havoc elsewhere as he can? Oh, maybe a kill coming out in the mid lane. Curious to see. He's oh, actually going to try and no, turn this one around. No, no way. No. Rinta Saka makes that one happen for himself. But the shutdown happening onto four in the bot lane. He finds his first death of this game. And 
Now potential. Yo Sang. Now, yeah, they want to get it. Merrick Maraca gets that one for himself and nice little turnaround. This is the fighting spirit that we've seen out of Missouri State. It popped up once before, but wasn't enough in game number one. We'll see if it can partially become enough in game number two. The Rift Herald absolutely going to take this tower down this time. Didn't finish the job in the first game, but no way this tower survives with as many minions and champions from Johns Hopkins now. Going to get a nice proc off onto the other one, I assume. Olaf, yeah, can't stop it in time. So another huge yeah. chunk of damage onto the inner tower for the mid lane. Could be great pickup, all things considered, and still ahead of that plating cutoff. Oh, no. Goodbye. That's it. That's uh, Yo saying finding himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Speaking and of... uh, maybe two for one deals uh, potentially on sale for Johns Hopkins. Uh, this is not going to be as easy as they well. wanted it to Ooh. be, though. With that ultimate coming through, it will finish off oh, one. Night's done. Just Missed the second one by an inch, though. Just on the edge. I mean, Night's done. Barely coming out of that one alive, but does. So they'll take, I mean, three for one is the ultimate trade at the end of the day is those death titans should take it up and sure it's a big one to give up it's of course 25th soul in the top lane darius but he's not actually as high priority of a target as he was in this last game and he's made a lot of room for the rest of his team to become absolutely massive threats when you look at the like of knights don rin Tasaka, and four all of these guys are massive players at this point in the game and the cs deficit Actually, the biggest right now in that mid lane, it's 50 to the credit of Rin Tosaka. Yeah. That's, uh... Oh. Maybe. Ah, oh, never mind. But, yeah, it's uh certainly been a lot of different early game, right? If we were to say anything, we'd say that they learn to not be scared. You know, take fights, take chances, see if you can turn the game around, because just maybe you can, right? But as you said, the mid lane is where this lead has developed instead of just the top side this time. And uh, CS leads in both are kind of worrisome. You know, solo lanes are kind of the lifeblood of the current meta. If they're both not in your favor, you have a lot of work to do to make that ground up. We talked about what adaptations Missouri State could make coming into this game to do a better job. and. I think much to their credit, they have made those adaptations, right? They are performing better in this game than they were in game number one, but is it enough? And so far, the answer looks to be no. The close point blank ultimate's gonna knock him up. Rinta Saka will go down. And three members make sure that's a pretty well guaranteed kill. Almost four. Ezreal tried to just, you know, toss off a little bit in there. Morocco said not without me, but a little late to the party this time around, though. Top lane, 25th soul, doesn't kill him with the dunk, can't get the spin either on the flash, and this could be dangerous for him. Has to bring in souls and as Certainly. well, just to try to get out, but you know, saying a little ambitious did go down, and that one, an unnecessary point back in the hands of Johns Hopkins, and not the kind of mistake you can afford to make when your life, you're, you're, you're on the lifeline here in the Winter Invitational. Life's on the line, and uh, it's not just the series, right? Um, if it was just the series, it'd feel like, you know, eh, it's, it's bad, but Johns Hopkins is still in playoffs after this, right? They're still going to have to beat these guys eventually to lose, right? And to lose, if they were to lose 2-0, if they were to lose this game, right, then it would be devastating right? Then you know that there's a team out there that convincingly beat you already. They're still in the playoffs. There's still another team you're going to have to beat at the very worst case scenario, right? The very best case scenario, this is the strongest team, right? You know this is the strongest team. You have to beat them. So to know that there's stronger teams out there and to know that they can beat you and to know that they can beat you very convincingly and in both soul lanes at the same time with great CS numbers, I mean, things happen, of course, but generally to make it more tolerable you want to put up a lot of a fight make it feel like it was close to keep that mental up that energy is so important right now at this point in the game because it already looks to just be like a repeat of the last time we've crossed that 15 minute threshold the positions are all so primed and so dangerous for johns hopkins and they're just going to try to execute out the exact same way as they did last game this is where Missouri State's adaptations need to start coming alive for them. This is where they really need to start focusing on 
you know, stopping some of this bleeding, particularly now the mid lane, which is a 60 CS advantage. And I say only 40 in the top lane with, you know, air quotes around that only. Lower than it was last game, but just got a large deficit to overcome here. They have better tools to do it this time. Maraca, you get the feeling that this guy might be in position to do a little bit more in this game on the Ezreal. Not so far behind four on this Jin. Not so far out of contention from being able to kill some of these champions. As well have Yosang. A damage threat for sure on this Nocturne, the way he's been building this one out. You kind of keep up in that house. You know, three kills. That's actually just the second most on any individual player outside of 25th Soul in this game. You have to start looking at what you can do, what objectives are right to contest here, and where you can start to set up. Because so far, they don't even have a tower. They've been backed into the corners of their map for... Maybe the last five, six minutes here. And definitely need to find something else besides maybe some just pick kills. If they can turn this into a little bit more, though, that would be nice. 25th soul okay. gone down. Now, what the cost, though? But their mid turret tower. mid is still yeah. going to drop the TP. They're letting it finish so Ooh. they can get the Galio. What a play. Absolutely devastating as they try to find more. Now, that is the paranoia coming down, but it's not enough. Knight's not on the killing forward. spree. They finally get potential, but it's only the support thus far. Is there more to come? It's a double kill so far for Knight's Dawn. Maybe more as it's a triple. Oh, Trying to get now down on the murmur. I think he's going to go down. That's the quadra, but no penta as Maraca does manage to stop that one in its tracks. Backup continues now as actually Knight's Dawn becomes a kill leader for the game with that particular quadra <sighs> play for himself. He's going to Go back, get himself some fun new items, and come back even stronger than before. Rin Tasaka in a good position to just slap down some of these jungle camps, get a little bit of that gold, make sure it doesn't go back into the hands of Missouri State, and just keep all sorts of pressure alive on them. Still sub-20 minutes, but an 8k gold lead and no turrets answered makes this dire for Missouri State. I mean, it seemed like they were doing it right. It seemed like they were getting the fight that they wanted. But remember, you can't cancel TP anymore. As soon as it started up from Galio, they pause the turret, right? They wait for the Galio to come out just to get the kill and to start the fight on the right foot. If you get the Galio kill there, right, there's no Galio ultimate now. That's a huge part of a turn factor, right? It's the only turn factor, I think, that could actually give uh, Johns Hopkins pause at this point into the game. And so without the Galio ultimate disrupting your fight, without the Galio taunt, being around with them being four versus five as well this is now a very easy fight for them even in a scenario where they don't have all of their members and so then they just continue to take it so in that sense i would say brilliant play by them they're continuing to exploit their gold lead extremely efficiently and it's all just working out working out indeed yeah i mean this is so devastating now if you are missouri state so much to claw back in this game and you take a look at just some of the CS differences, some of the kill differences. I mean, these guys are just so far off to the races right now for Johns Hopkins, and it's got to be just demoralizing, got to be on the back foot. 20 minutes now. You know, this is around the time when Johns Hopkins just absolutely floored the gas pedal and did not let up for the rest of the game in game number one. It's been a clean display. If you're any other team looking at this Johns Hopkins saying, we've got them coming up, we know they're coming around. What thoughts are going through your brain? It's how do we contain these solo laners who, even when they're not popping off in kills, like Rin Tasaka, even when he's not, you know, got the stellar scoreboard, the CS is so far dominant over even members of his own team, let alone the enemy team. I mean, this guy's just been allowed to free farm so hard. They're going to try to get one back on him. That's the shutdown. Get a little bit of that bounty. And hey, 40 second death timer. Maybe they can make something out of this, but... Not if Nightstone has any say about it. He wants to find more ultimate. Just kind of whips, but he's still on pursuit. Trying to get it and locks him up now for the uh, Belkos to come through. Four gets a kill out of that one as well. And a little bit more pressure coming down now as the curtain call opens up. And they're trying to get onto Maraca, but fourth shot hits. Doesn't quite kill him. He's so low, but not out of this one entirely. We'll have time to regroup, but that's going to mean a bot lane tower. Potentially Baron as well. Take it out and away for that. And uh, that's that's really, really hard to come back from. I mean, they're continuing to press forwards. Oh, to hold that thought. Olaf is here. He gets Knight's Dawn. That's one. Ooh, yeah, stops and the done. jungle at least. Yeah, no yeah. smite. That's a good thing to see, but there's no smite on the other side. There's nobody even close. They can't get there in time. With the Darius pressuring bot, the Ezreal has his hands tied as well. The only damage carry they could possibly muster 
is not going to be there. So the Baron will go down. This will be a secure by John Hopkins nearly the same time for the Baron. Right after it spawns, they take it down, and they are going to look pushed towards this bottom lane. But with the Darius taunted up, maybe he might go down. I don't wonder. Flash away. Does, yeah, look to get out of that one with the flash. Everything okay. All Even keel at the end of the day and buys a lot of time for Rin Tosaka actually to bring this wave along with his own little uh, additions to it, to this top side. He's going to back off. He knows that, you know, he can't take on four of them again. Doesn't know exactly where all members are, but doesn't want to get goosed like last time. At least pulls out Solzan. Yeah, it's another four on one. He's already killed out one, so brings it down to a three and make it down to a two there as he does finish off. Yo saying as well, and now brings a couple friends of his own. The bell cost to polish this one off and gets Vainsu down. Now only Maraca lived to survive for that one. And Murner was bot lane clearing out the entire time, just trying to stay alive in this. It didn't matter enough for him. Hmm. This, this is, is another I mean, down. at this Almost point, right, with them pushing in towards this. I think that the inhibitor will be going down, and most likely, they're going to be able to get something more. Continue to pursue Knight's Dawn, finally shoved off, but also does give enough time for his teammates to respawn, include the minion waves just one time, and now, hopefully make an answer back. Um, because the answer would be, you know, getting themselves back into this game. 13,000 gold deficit, though. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. I mean, usually, usually a 4,000 gold deficit is quite significant at 23 minutes. 13,000 gold is absolutely insane. Just the individual deficits they have to make up. I mean, as a team, certainly, there's seven towers in the hole. Plenty of kills as well, but just those individual CS marks as well that they would have to just catch up with would take them five, ten minutes to get back up to that level of CS, assuming that the members of the enemy team weren't still farming, that Johns Hopkins just were kind of sitting around. It's devastating to have to try to come back from, and now that's the paranoia, wanting to get in onto just the support, but potential turns that one back on its head, and Yosang in some trouble. Having to run from the minions as well, all buffed up and barren. The supers coming into the base, knocking on the door, making their presence known too, and that's where it gets tricky, because now you can't defend this top tower, you can't defend this bot tower, you can't do it all at once. Well, Johns Hopkins can. They can make sure this pressure absolutely stifles out the likes of Missouri State and doing just that, because drawing four members to the top side means this Darius has a lot to do in the bottom, but they may just want to kill. What a needle oh. thread, as it does hit him down. That's the inhibitor as well, and this is bad news for the Ezreal. He's out of that one. Maraca, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, can't get back to base, can't get back to fountain in time. And they are absolutely strangling out now oh, the again with the Darius. of Missouri State and right under tower. Doesn't matter. That's going to oh. be game number two in a similar fashion to game number one, but just maybe a little bit better on the time. Sub 25 this time around. They make it happen. They bring themselves to an absolutely astonishing continued undefeated record. Whew. Wow. That 2 is... 0 in all their series, including this one. Johns Hopkins are absolute tyrants of the Winter Invitational. I mean, you want to talk about ways to win? That's uh, that's a certainly one of them, yeah. right? Johns Hopkins said, hey, you know what? We are here, even though we might not have had the strongest uh, competitors, we deserve to be here. And uh, that's it. They had the meta, they had a perfect read, and they just won it out. You know, that was absolutely everything that they needed to do. And I I got nothing else. I mean, they had they a great it. read on the meta. They just, they seemed like one of the strongest contenders we've seen so far. And they're placed to that hype, the power rankings, for good reason, obviously. Right, yeah. And we'll see if we can't take another look at those power rankings before we uh, do kind of head out here. But to, to just spin for a little bit more on that, you, you have to think, this Missouri State team, they beat some good teams to be here too, right? They hadn't dropped a best of series. I mean, we talked about, you know, Carnegie Mellon. We talked about columbia and just some of the accomplishments that missouri state you know managed to stay alive in this entire run through the tournament well it was johns hopkins at the end of the day that didn't just beat them but beat the brakes off of them with some astonishing solo lane power i mean you know things jungle looked you know okay pathing wise pretty similar and you know the bot lane could have gone heads or tails either way but at the end of the day it did bring it all down now to those solo lanes to the absolute uh, you know, 
just top echelon. And yeah, and we can get those power rankings up real quick here. Um, this is the opinions of our CSL staff um, on the matter. And uh, <laughs> so just the University reason. of Washington ranked right. above Johns Hopkins. That's going to be a matchup that I think we're all kind of hoping to see in due time here. I believe they the earliest they meet is um, semis. Mm. If I know the bracket as well as I think too. I do. So we yeah. shall see um, exactly where they're actually going to um, come into play. But actually, so Clash of the Titans in this top 16 is actually going to come to head next, right? We have uh, yeah. later this week, it's mm-hmm. going to be Washington State versus, or sorry, Washington U versus ASU. Arizona right? State, right, number eight. So number one versus number eight, right? The power rankings, obviously here for a reason, but with ASU as a top 10 team, right? Now we're coming to the point at which these teams are really going to go head to head. They're really going to be tested because before this, right? uh, Missouri was, you know, they were good, right? They took down CC. They were good, but we didn't have them, you know, in the top 10. They were, you know, not included because of strength considerations, et cetera, that happened. but these are ranked teams, right? Mm-hmm. These are teams that we expect to be supremely strong. If this delivers, it's going to be fantastic. Well, like you said, that's all coming around on Thursday. Same time, same place. You can check out that game. Twitch TV slash C-Star. It's where you are right now, obviously. And uh, yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific. It, uh, actually, should be Pacific time for, uh, for both of those universities. I believe Arizona's on uh, Pacific and not Mountain Time, but I could be wrong there. I'm sure I'll be corrected if I am, but either way, more League of Legends action to come as this top 16 is starting to heat up in uh, in quite a few ways here. Now, we obviously do want to congratulate Johns Hopkins on their astonishing 2-0 victory, keeping the streak alive, undefeated, not just in their series, but in games as well, making now the unfortunate... Missouri State, another brick in that wall, but we do want to thank them for appearing on stream and playing their hearts out for us here as well. That's going to do it for us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Corvus. I've been joined by Jeff Zeta Schnur. Love to hear your feedback on Twitter if you are so inclined. You can find us in those boxes below our talking heads here. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. We'll see you on Thursday for more league action. Thanks.